Hi, I'm Lisa Singer, and I am the Senior Director of Event Programming at Media Post, and this is Brand Insider BTS, where I get to talk with some of the most influential women marketers today. And with me is Ashley Honore Smith. She is the SVP of Brand and Strategic Communications at Finance of America Reverse. Katie, how are you? Welcome, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. It's it's so fun to be here in the company of some amazing women in the industry. I uh, I just saw Reggie Casagrande speak two days ago, and it was awesome. Yeah. And I've admired Angela Zapata from afar, having a number of friends who have worked on Hyundai Kia Genesis business over the years. So this is very cool. Thank you for having me. Oh, I mean, how great is my job, huh? I get to talk with all these amazing women like yourself. And, and it always is. And I always end up inspired in some way. Like, definitely, it makes me realize what I'm not doing, what I should be doing, or just sometimes just having the conversations, it just gets you more motivated, you know? So I love that. And that's why I love that you are doing this, because I know you have some big news that has recently happened work-wise, and you left me in the dark a bit. So <laughs> fill me in. Sure. So I am. Um, I have recently accepted a new position with uh, our whole parent company, Finance of America Companies, as the SVP of Brand and Strategic Communication. So effectively, I get to do the job that I've been doing at Finance of America Reverse or FAR, uh, but at the enterprise level. So um, I will be bringing in brand management, creative communications content into a newly created central marketing team under the auspices of a customer office. Uh, so reporting to Chief Customer Officer Jason Redman. And it's a super exciting, um, well, it's an exciting step for me, but it's it's an exciting move for the organization uh, to start to create that central function. Yeah, and I don't want to get too much into the organization because this is all about you, but I do want to know how does that change your position or what you'll be doing and in, in just not maybe necessarily day to day, but the big picture. Yeah, so um, it what it does is instead of having the one brand that's you know been my baby for the last four years, now I have a whole family to to care for essentially. So we um, we're an enterprise. You can think of almost a a mini rocket um, where we have several different business units along lending and lender services. Um, it's in the, the traditional mortgage space as well as uh, more retirement oriented products and reverse mortgage and a few things like that, um, as well as home sharing is a part of that retirement experience. There's commercial lending for people who are working through their, um, their fix and flip opportunities or expanding their portfolio of rent rentals. Um, so basically, uh, I get to work across all of these brands now and think about as the company uh, begins its process of transformation towards a customer-centric organization, uh, I get to think about the brand architecture for that. And I get to think about the way that we're going to go to market, um, organized around key experiences for the customer rather than products. Uh, so it's essentially a, a different purview, a different point of view, and much more of a, you know, a kind of strategy role where you're you're levering different pieces and making the system work together. Wow, that's impressive. So, I mean, again, congratulations. That's awesome for you. And it sounds like it's going to be a very um, challenging undertaking, but, uh, it's, you know, obviously you're ready for it and excited for it. So I love yeah, that. I am, I'm very excited. Well, and you can see that, but I also love that you, you say you're kind of being the mom or the mother of all, you know, much more, uh, the more, I guess, components or parts of your team and parts of your, uh, your business. And that brings me to your LinkedIn page where you described yourself as brand mother and chair squad captain. Now, obviously this works well in what you just described, but what, where does that come from? Why do you describe yourself that way? Yes, uh, I think that that cheeky title must certainly come from something in me that's a little 
a little bit resist being too, too corporate. Um, it's true that I consider myself cheer captain for the brands that I create and steward. I'm a great hype woman, uh, rallying people around an idea, uh, especially through language and through experience. That's, that's where I feel happiest and feel the most in my superpower. And I, I'm definitely a brand mom. I think about nurturing something from just like a twinkle in the eye to something with the structure, the foundation, the kind of internal sense of who you are to go forth and nurture. Um, that's not that different in a way. I think it's an appropriate metaphor for the kind of work that us brand marketers have to do um, to form and nurture and then grow a brand right well and you talk about you know internally what what is who you are personally then obviously if you can transfer that to what you're doing career-wise or for your work it makes it one you probably enjoy it that much more and also two you're better at it so talk about that and i'm sure that's an innate part of you having that kind of that cheer squad mentality but when you were first starting out i mean you've worked on the brand side you've worked on the media side um, you've even worked you work on the agency side. So uh, when you started out, did you, how did you see your path going? What were your initial um, aspirations? And then how did they maybe, you know, change a little bit along the way? Yeah, <laughs> I've had a very uncon unconventional trajectory. Uh, I honestly, um, I didn't have a lot of direction out of college. Uh, I think I always I had a sense that I wanted to work in advertising, but I didn't pursue it in a very full-bodied way. I kind of just grabbed a job to pay the bills. And I found myself in a situation where I just wasn't at all. I don't know. I woke up one day and thought, why am I not using my marketing degree? What am I doing here? And so I actually went to one of the clients that I had at the time. Uh, it was Velasis. That's a direct mail um, a direct mail company based in Connecticut and Michigan. They have a different name now. I can't recall. It's been several iterations of that company over the years, but direct mail, newspaper inserts, that was my first kind of vendor side job. Uh, and then when I was able to move back to California, um, I had a couple, I just laugh looking back at my initial years in the industry, I had a couple of really awesome opportunities that I didn't take advantage of. Um, I had an opening or an opportunity to work at Siegel and Gale. I had an offer at Shiat Day. Um, but honestly, because of circumstances at the time and not having a mentorship or somebody in the know that I could reflect these decisions with, uh, I ended up going to the publisher side. And what was fortunate there is that that ended up being the summer of 2008. And had, in retrospect, even if I had done the smart thing, taken one of those big agency jobs, I would likely have not made the cut when it came to the industry downturn that happened later in 2008 and 2009. But I was fortunate to be at a large digital publisher that grew significantly through that period. I helped to um, really stand up one of the, the um, big areas of growth for internet brands. It's, it's like the largest publisher that no one's ever heard of. But I worked in the, the home and lifestyle group there. Uh, and that was at a time when digital publishers were starting to harness their content production capabilities and think about leveraging those capabilities in partnership with brands. So it quickly turned into a branded content studio. And I found a beautiful niche there through, you know, a large part of my career, going from internet brands to a a small publisher, a niche publisher called The Daily Dot, which was wonderful and such a purpose-driven um, place to be at the time. Uh, and then I had moved on you know, in media to a place called Render Media that was in news and in um, some lifestyle and in food. Then out of the blue, I had a friend um, who is a consultant bring me in uh, and introduce me to the president of Finance of America Reverse. 
they were going through a about to embark on a transformation. Their former head of marketing had left and what they needed more than anything was a belief in digital, the power of digital and a storyteller. So um, it was kismet. I learned a lot more about the challenge. And I think as a marketer at heart, such an enormous challenge, I couldn't walk away from it. It was exciting. So I came there and after four years, um, now it's time for me to, you know, take that, the, the success that we've had in transforming one business line in this enterprise and look to bring some of that thinking, some of that, um, some of the experience of that transformation up to our enterprise level. Yeah. And it's just, it's well, the fact that they looked at you on the publishing side and still knew that your skill set would cross over is huge because that doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes it's difficult. I know people who, you know, as a reporter, you know, they have certain skill sets. We have, I have certain skill sets and it wasn't necessarily easy to cr cross it over to whether it be digital or whether, you know, to be in advertising or whatever it may be, because I think everyone has this like silo thought thinking, like this is what you do. They, they sort of pigeonhole you into a certain spot. So the fact that you had people who were saw in you that you could do it, was it difficult when they came to you? Like you knew, you know, you were interested in it and marketing was in your heart, but at the same point, did you have to do any convincing to let them know your skills would cross over and, and do they know you enough that that wasn't a factor? Well, it, I think it, right down the middle, right? There were, there were places that I knew um, I had to, I was going to have a lot of learning to do, but that was an acknowledgement at the beginning. You know, there were parts that were just so perfect and felt like fate. And then other parts that we knew it would be a stretch position. So, um, you know, I, like I would say, I went from doing, you know, this much at the end of the marketing cycle, you know, kind of sometimes branded content can be like the cherry on top of like a really elaborate Sunday um, to the whole thing soup to nuts. So there was most certainly a learning curve. And um, through my boss's mentorship, encouragement and support, as well as just leveraging the heck out of my network, uh, I was able to build um, those skills, close gaps where I had them. And, uh, you know, it was, I think, just the kind of perfect match of being strong where they needed strength the most at the time. Did you ever take pause? Did you ever sort of say, am I taking on too much? Or did you just say, you know what? as they say, fake it till you make it kind of thing or? Yeah, <laughs> both of those things. Uh, you know, I had some friends that were saying, wow, they are, you know, it's it's l lucky for, um, for everybody <laughs> that this is, that you're willing to take on so many different things. And it does get crazy, right? You can, when you're in, this is something of, um, it felt like sometimes a bit of a startup in a larger organization. And I think anyone who's been on a smaller team knows that wearing of a lot of hats can get very stressful. Um, but having a very clear vision of where it could go, I think helped a great deal with knowing that the moment was the moment and it would pass and we would grow and mature and I along with that. So, um, you know, it's kind of cool to be on the other side. Yep. And obviously you were along with that very well because <laughs> here you are today and, and I, I think that's really a good story for women starting out um I think women especially don't necessarily have that confidence or they more point out oh I've never done this this or this so even though I've done all of these things they're not ready to they more acknowledge their what they lack as opposed mm -hmm. to their skills I think that can happen or that confidence level can maybe um not be as you know as big as maybe with men and not to, you know, I'm sure it happens on the, on the male side as well. But um, so I think that's such a great story to show that, you know what, you knew you had these gaps, but you knew you could also do it and you just went forward and don't, don't second guess yourself. And I think that's very important to know. So. You know, I, I, I have read an, a lot of articles recently about that kind of, um, you know, 
the gap sometimes, the behavioral gap between women applying for a role and men applying for a role that women often wait till they feel they've checked off every checkbox on the list. You know, when those qualifications are bulleted out, do I check off every one where just behaviorally speaking, men tend to go for the aspirational role a little bit more. And so I think that's a good word where, um, you know, women could maybe use a little more, uh, like just knowing that in and of itself is empowering saying, oh, wait, okay. If other people are not waiting until they've checked off every checkbox, then maybe I don't have to either. So I hope this is encouraging for people to say, you know, if you know your strengths and you have enough, um, kind of wherewithal to, to close the gaps where, you know, that they, they exist, go for the role. Right. And, and that's important to say, no, you know, yes, go for the role, go for that aspirational role. I love that. But also then do your duty. You know what I mean? Follow up, do that work, make sure you do fill in those gaps and then you can continue to move forward just the way you have. So I, yeah. I you know, the, you need both parts of it, but I think that yes, women tend to not they do checking off the box. That's exactly I, the way I would describe it. Yeah. So, and you have to leverage a network when you yes. when you're in that place. You seek out the education, you seek out the mentorship, seek out the training, and you seek out a peer network too that can help help you raise your game. Well, that goes right into. I mean, I know you're a part of Chief, and um, really, it's about strengthening leadership, the leadership journey for women, and to really being a part of that. And there's so many amazing women who are a part of Chief and you included, as I just said. Talk about that. I mean, one, what do you, how do you feel like you can be a mentor? How, how can you with the, within the organization to help people? Um, let, let's start with that. Like in terms of what do you think is important as how do you offer that value? And what do you think other women who are part of that group or other groups need to be able to step up to do and, and to help women who aren't in your position. Mm -hmm. One of the wonderful things about Chief and the reason that I, um, I said yes when they approached me is this sense of, um, it's a, such a collegial set of, of peers and you can develop these very, um, these relationships that, uh, whether it's within your same function or it's broad, you can develop a network uh, that is safe to come to that network with uh, the challenges that you're facing. Uh, and in the same way that you might freely receive input from the peers around you in chief, uh, you also want to be you know, have that be a two-way street and in, in giving that as well. So I found that um, in the dynamic of that particular organization, um, there's this like, you know, give and receive kind of reciprocal relationship that has been really, really helpful for me. Uh, you know, just when I was thinking about making a change to our, this enterprise role, I just put out a note to a few of the members saying, you know, I could use an ear to talk to. And I had some very high level women, call, you know, reach out to me and say, call me anytime. I would love to talk about this. And um, just experiencing that and feeling the value for myself, I think that makes you want to turn around and, you know, pay that forward. So, um, you know, I've, I, I have some kind of in, internal mentorship relationships with um, within my organization, but I'm also um, newly a mentor with Think LA, um, with our ad club here in Los Angeles. And I hope that that becomes a ongoing part of um, just my kind of existence in the industry. Um, it's, it's been so meaningful for me. I wanna turn that around. Well, you, and you kind of answered, because I did say there's a second part to the question, which you, you mentioned a moment where you did turn to the women at Chief to see about going, taking on that enterprise position. But um, what about just before that in life, at, when you were younger, maybe, was there a pivotal moment where maybe someone stepped up or maybe you just were able to achieve a certain thing that kind of gave you that, um, 
you know, power sh that, that journey. You, it gave you a pivotal moment in your journey that you felt you were on the right track or maybe when you were um, at a crossroads or you were sort of some, you know, doubting things. Sure, I, there's, there's been a few times. Uh, I, well, the initial um, introduction by my friend who was consulting for, you know, the, the, for FAR, um, that was certainly a pivotal moment. And uh, it was very much a, you know, because of the relationships that I had, um, that vote of confidence there, um, that meant a lot to me, right? And that is a, that is a lifelong, you know, personal and professional relationship that I will, that I'll have. And so um, I'll, I'll always be grateful for that introduction and that opportunity. Um, another time, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that my boss, you know, when I was in the business unit at FAR, that, um, you know, in, in my growth over my time there, that I had the support of my boss, Kristen Seifert, the president, and um, I would point to uh, several moments across the, in the years, um, the four years that I worked for her, where she, you know, really was specific about saying, I have your back. You, I want you to know that when you see opportunities for growth in terms of mentorship and continuing education, um, you know, something that you think is important for you as a professional, let's talk about it. And that specific stated offer of that support has been monumental for my career. So I'm deeply grateful for that. That's amazing. Cause not, I mean, it, you, you find both sides of it. I mean, there's definitely, obviously what you just talked about the women that have been um, your mentors and part of chief and other organizations, but there's also that sometimes women have a little bit more insecurity or you know maybe competition from where then they don't necessarily step up so i think we all experience both of those and that you were able to you know you you know have these people in your life that must have been amazing for you but i i want to ask in terms of because you mentioned when you were first graduating or in and you were a little not sure you know it's ah. I, you to, I didn't want to just glide by that like why were you not sure? And like, was it insecurities? Was it just you were having too much fun? Was it like you weren't, didn't know which direction to go? And, and how did that change or affect, you know, as you move forward? Oh man, Lisa, I love that question because I know my answer. My answer was that I wasn't curious enough. I wasn't curious enough. I wasn't ambitious enough for myself. Um, I remember having a conversation with, you know, the the chair of the marketing department um, towards the end of my senior year. And he was asking me what my plans were. And I was kind of like, well, well, you know, I'm going to do this. And I, 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 as much as I wish he would have challenged me more to, I, I remember the look on his face and he was kind of like, okay, <laughs> you know, okay. That's not a plan, but <laughs> yeah. Or I don't think, you know, I'm sure what he was thinking was, you know, what you're, continuing with the job that you've had through college and just thinking that you're going to rise up through the ranks, that might not be, be enough for you, girl. <laughs> That's probably what he was thinking. Um, so part of me wishes he would have pushed, but way more so part, I wish that I would have just been more curious. I should have um, thought, taken time to think more about, um, about the career that I wanted. And, you know, I'm a big believer in people having many different chapters in their life. So, you know, I don't think that a college student, and I was young, I went to college early, so I was especially young. Um, I don't think that a college student needs to have their life charted out. But if you can have some curiosity about the way the world works, about the types of jobs people have, or, you know, even seeing the end product out in the market, and doing the detective work to understand how that product came to be, um, that can tell somebody a lot about the steps that might be traditional to get into that path. And even if they take an untraditional path, at least they're aware of the 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 typical right. um, way to get there. Yeah. Well, I have to also then I can't just fly by this. 
for you young going to college? Were you like some prodigy? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm good at taking tests. <laughs> so I tested out of high school as a sophomore. You were a sophomore when you tested out? Yeah. So I went to college when I was 16. Oh my gosh. I mean, but on the one hand, awesome. You get to like go so fast and, you know, who, I mean, I enjoyed senior year, but other than that, like, you know, it's kind of nice to have bypassed it, but also just at that age, when everyone else around you is two, three years older or more, how did you even adapt to that? Um, not super well at first, <laughs> but there was also, you know, there was a confluence of circumstances happening that particular year, um, my freshman year that, um, I think contributed to having a rough start. Uh, but you know, I think into my second year, things started to even out a lot. Uh, and, um, I, you know, I, I don't know if it was, if I would change the way that that worked out. Um, but I do, you know, I, I think I would, I would certainly change some of the decisions I made or just create, if I could like go back and, you know, coach myself a bit, I think it would be to be more curious and like have a greater sense of urgency about taking advantage of the moment. So did, now here's another, did you pause for this one? Like, you know, I mean, like that's a big deal going right from sophomore year to college. Did, did that ever make you say, maybe this isn't a good idea? Um, you know, I, I was, I was eager to like get a move on. So, um, I, you know, I don't think that was, it wasn't huge for me. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So it's a very impressive. No one. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> you were little, I'm not using this word. I'm just for lack of a better, a little flaky when you were graduating because you were really young. Like it wasn't like you know. Yes, we're all young when we graduate college, but you especially. Yeah, I yeah, I just you know I think, but you know, like my my brother in law, he he knew he wanted to be a veterinarian from the time he was three years old, right? And he is one today. So some people are built that way where they just like are so driven and they know exactly what they're going to do. And other people have to find not only something that sparks their interests, but, um, you know, maybe like do a little more work than other people to, to lay out a path to get there. So I was, I was one of the latter, but like, you know, I made it. Well, that's your, it's also your opportunity to, I mean, especially in the marketing industry, but in any industry aside, you're a vet, you're a doctor, you kind of have to go a certain path. But within most industries, there's different roads to kind of take or just, hey, I never knew about this. Let's put the focus over here. So there are going to be a lot of pivots just because as you continue on the job front and working, you're going to experience other things. And then that's going to expand what you want to do and your role. So it completely makes sense. So at least because that's been mine too. Although I did know I wanted to be a reporter since junior high. I wow. To, I wanted to be a vet first, but then I knew I couldn't be like animals dying like that. I just couldn't yeah. handle it. Yeah. I also wanted to be a parachute jumper for a while, which I don't know where that came from because I'm afraid of heights. That is interesting. That, that said, for since junior high, I knew I wanted to be a reporter. It was just trying to figure out what medium, but um, as far as moving forward from that. So it's always, I love playing detective. I love interviewing people like this and I love research. So all of those things just brought me to wanting to do that so oh, but, I love that that's so cool yeah but it's but it's had a lot of pivots a lot of you know one from the other and you know some my choice some not my choice but uh yeah so it's definitely you just got to be open to it you know keep mm -hmm. moving forward and whatever you find that's exciting then embrace it I love it yeah so well I, I have to jump in on this because this I thought was kind of funny I was of course as I always say I stalk people on the internet and so I was looking at your Instagram page and it's very underused though. You need to. <laughs> I know, I know. It's one of those, I always am saying like, oh, you know, it's the, the cobbler's children have no shoes. Isn't that the, the <laughs> idiom that, so it's like, you know, the communications person can't update their social feed. It's bad. <laughs> you know what? It's the pot calling the kettle black. Is that the term? Like I, if you saw mine, it is very, I don't post on it at all. I'm very, and I even actually taught seminars on social media. <laughs> so I'm even worse. But that said, your Instagram name is call me Smitty. So obviously your last name Smith, I get that. But 
why like did, was this just the only username available or do you go by smitty or what what's that from well yeah you can't there's not a lot of available handles left these days on those, those <laughs> platforms but everybody does call me smitty okay. my boss colleagues my ceo calls me that um i make everybody call me that i you know years ago i had an east coast counterpart who called me smitty and i just like I don't know. I loved it. And I, I thought it was endearing <laughs> the way he said it. Uh -huh. So I kept it. And also just being an eighties baby, there's, there's all, I was on a soccer team with four Ashley's three Jessica's and like <laughs> two Brianna's. So I hate being Ashley S and I just think, I think the juxtaposition is, is, and it's entertaining to me, you know, like I, it's like when my son was a toddler, his name's Richard Smith. And it was so funny and like a, a doctor's office or some kind of setting like that when they call Richard Smith and this like little blonde, you know, tiny toddler would be walking up instead of an old man. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. It's, yeah, it's distinctive. Smitty too. <laughs> <laughs> My other son is. He said he's Smitty Jr. He just got elected um the publicity officer for his student body council wow. so i'm going soccer mom on that situation i'm like okay buddy we got to talk about your team i don't let's restructure it i don't think it makes sense we're having a like let's brainstorm <laughs> we're having a lot of fun. We have another marketer in the family coming uh -huh. you know definitely <laughs> do that um i also more snooping the one of the photos on your page one of the out of six i believe there were um, <laughs> but they, you were holding up sort of a pamphlet kind of thing that said um, next for me and um, basically it says um, what's uh, what does it say a guide to change for everybody well so what's next for you yeah well, next for me is a, it's a wonderful organization that far has partnered with previously um, well I could say definitively what's next for me it's the new role and the new challenge that we talked about so stepping into the role of brand and communications leader for Finance of America companies uh, and thinking about how we um, how we create a big front door, a big master brand for the enterprise. Um, the, the organization came together quickly through acquisition about seven years ago or so. And all of the different groups, the business units, um, they have worked, um, you know, to address the, the business challenge that they in particular had. There wasn't really a central group creating a unifying strategy across the entire, the entire enterprise. So um, what's next for me is finding a way to bring the story together um, bring the story together for the enterprise, but also specifically the customer, right? And defining the experiences that um, that people are are looking for um, around, you know, their home as a superpower in the world that we live in today. Uh, I think there's a lot of exciting opportunities, and ultimately, we're going to be able to to create a pretty compelling offering uh, as we bring all of the powers from the disparate parts of the organization into you know, a core value proposition. Well, I, I love that side of it, but I wanna ask you more personally. Okay. For you, is there something you wanna see changed or just on a personal side of things? Oh my gosh, on a personal side of things. Okay, my um, my house is, I call it a Brady Bunch house, and it is a 1960s, you know, it's not like a cool mid-century modern, it's like a, remind, it does remind me of my grandma's house, and it was redone in the 90s, so I think there's some, there's some time, um, it's time to redo it in the, the, 2020s. <laughs> so um, actually like creating a space that would be, you know, my kind of my office. Um, I, I want to do like an office shed and do some fun stuff like that and ultimately create the kind of haven that I've wanted to make my home. Um, that's definitely a, a, per, a per, personal and professional crossover there because we think so much at my job about the power of home 
and what that means for people. And, um, you know, I want to, I want to practice a little bit of what I'm preaching and make my home a place that I, I just, you know, it feels very beautiful and um, reflects the way that um, my family lives. Yeah. With all that extra time you're going to have with your new family. Totally. Just a little side project, some remodeling, some demolition. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, really. Oh, well, this is so great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you, um, you know, have, taking the time with everything that's going on and, and sharing your story. So thanks. You got it. Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. No, I'm glad to have you. And thank you for watching. Uh, as I say always, please, if you have anyone that you'd like me to talk with, sort of bring back the curtain on, please let me know and I will do my best. Thanks again for watching and thanks Ashley.